Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for being here today. I, I want to start off by thanking Deborah uh, Gilbert and uh, Jill Waterman, who wrote the wonderful article on B&H blog. Everybody, b and I've been a, a big uh, client of b and before the Superstore when they were back on uh, 17th Street all those years ago. I certainly want to mention uh, Thames and Hudson, the company that published this book. Harry Burton, who's here, did beautiful publicity for us. Christopher Sweet, my partner in crime. And Willie Chu, thank you so much for being part of that team and doing everything that you've done. Uh, of course, my mother, who gave me the opportunity to do the, the book and work with my father's archive, and my girlfriend, who is behind the scenes, and my my strength and my love. So without further ado, I'll start the talk. So every great story has a background. The context with which you have to view this is where I grew up. I grew up as the son of Jerry and Cynthia Danzig. My, pa my father was a panoramic photographer, won Guggenheim grants. We traveled around America. We traveled to Australia. My father was larger than life, and he was right next to me, yet I really didn't know him. The talk today focuses on key themes of when you discover a great body of work, when you follow that up with gathering the evidence of that, making the book, and the dual tribute. Where I'd like to start is the, the very beginning of before that project happens, when you first discover the material, when it, when it reaches into your, your heart and it rips and it tears and it becomes something that you, you know is so great that you have to share it and the multiple reasons of that project are so obvious to you. So I went up to my father's studio in 1999 and I didn't know what I would find. Among the things that were around was this incredible file of Billie Holiday work. This is one of those pictures that just reaches in and grabs you. The discovery of his files was uh, a magic moment for me. It was a, an epiphany. I knew I was going to do something great with this material back in 1999, and I just, I just couldn't hide my excitement about it. And uh, looking further and further, as I'd been a big fan of Billie Holiday, even before the material made itself apparent, it was, it was such a, a great opportunity to share what the work would be and my father's vision of her. So I also found slides. And within those slides, images of Billie Holiday that you'd never seen before. Color, full of life, full of happiness. A magic woman, if there ever was one. On the contact sheets, discovering what my father did with available light, no flash, in this small club in Newark, New Jersey in April of 1957. Before I came to the work, my mother was working in 1998 as the archivist of the Jerry Danzig archives, undeclared. And Vanity Fair ran a full, cover, uh, a full page of Billie Holiday with the David Margolik article on sugar, uh, on um, bitter, what is it? Strange fruit, strange fruit. How can I, how can, it's a bitter crop, that's what the, that's the line is. Okay, anyway, so, so this article and this picture, for the first time my father had a full, full page in Vanity Fair. And this was before I became the archivist. Um, one of the things I discovered was my mother's notations on my father's stationery, which showed him as a panoramic photographer at the time. And this was the first time I recognized what C-176 meant, which was the, the file number for my father. And uh, identifying all these for the first time was a very exciting moment for me. We did the mock-up for David's book as he was working on Strange Fruit and the behind story of that song. And then my mother had sent me this wonderful reach out from David asking if people had stories or photos or anything. And that's how I connected to David. And David was very crucial because David ultimately brought me to Bill Dufty. And Bill Dufty was the co-writer for Lady um, Autobiography. And it was where she resided. This is a letter that she wrote to Tallulah Bankhead with, you'll see, Billie Holiday, Care of the Dufties on 43 West 93rd Street. 
as you'll see in the book, and that was her safe house. That was where she found family. And this is a letter that I got from Bill after I was introduced to Bill from David. And it's, Bill, it's the safe house, Billie Holiday Inn. Um, Dufty didn't live much longer than two years after I met him, but he was full of great stories and wisdom in the time that I met him. And uh, he was a magical man, and his son was and is Billy's godson. Uh, he's in the photos. So I brought Bill to Brooklyn. My mother captured the moment, meeting my father after all those years and remembering what it was like during that week in 1957. my mother's diary documenting with detail everything that happened that evening, the, the memories of Billy, the dog, the fact that they were gifts from Ava Gardner. Magic of finding the work that we find, well, first of all, this is Bill, the capper of the evening was him singing For All We Know. But I was putting together all the pieces to the puzzle here in this discovery moment, and I found Decca Records. Decca Records, Billy Holiday, $25, which was an interesting find. So from that moment, I went and researched and found this cover, 1957. It was reissued recordings from the 40s, but this picture was definitely taken on April 18th, 1957. Unfortunately, it's uncredited, un but we believe it's my father's photograph. Billy Holiday at Sugar Hill. Looking further, the discovery in my father's Rolodex was that he had presented a portfolio in late November and had a contact at Decca Records. And looking even further, I found that Thames and Hudson was in his Rolodex back in the 50s. And how wonderful that Thames and Hudson would ultimately champion our book and put us on the cover of their catalog. The discovery of the photographs was very interesting when I flipped them over and I saw on the back, C slash November, the lady sings the blues. I didn't know at the time what it meant, but as I did my research, I discovered it meant C Magazine, November 1957. And there, lo and behold, in an excerpt from her autobiography, were many of the photographs that my father had taken that I had never seen published before. And indeed, this was the largest, before the book that we had published this year, was the largest collection of the photographs that my father took during that time. One of the things that always struck me strange was this picture, which had been written flop on the back of it, and I realized it was this picture. So you'll see, I don't know what the editorial decision was back in the 50s, but I guess it was better for her to look that way than that way. But that's Carl Drinkard behind her, and she's on Broad Street. And that's the same pink lacy dress that she wore that wonderful day that she stood in front of Sugar Hill. So I was discovering also that she was getting gifts from fans, and she had, hey, Mary. So she, was, uh, she had just turned 42 on April 7th. So we're not sure exactly, but we discovered that this was a, a gift that she was given at the time. And that's Bernie Weissman next to her on the street of Newark. And I discovered that part of the story, but I'm, I'm still looking to discover who these two gentlemen are. And if anybody has any idea who they are, I believe they're musicians working, as I could see them in their professional gear. So the discovery of the prints, as I said, looking on the back was very interesting because there was his stamp. And at the time, I didn't know what 65 South 6th Street meant. But as I learned, it was his parents' home where he lived after the war, after uh, he'd come back to New York. And I was confirmed that he was setting up his photography studio there because this was the mock-up that I found in Atlanta among his sister's papers when I went to visit my aunt and then his official business card. So that was an interesting find. And then, even on his tax return, <laughs> where he's labeled a photojournalist. This is the sort of history detective stuff that I absolutely love and uh, that I get into. In fact, it mentions Newark because he must have gone back and forth so many times. And I love that, and I love those kind of details, and that's the kind of thing that archivists like myself really get excited about. 
Um, so 65 South 6th Street still exists. And went down there many times in the last few years. And I even had the author portrait taken by Willie Chu. And it was a privilege to be on those steps where my father had spent that time. And I imagined that his photo studio with all the things that he had done at that time were so close to me. So another one of the things I discovered was on a contact sheet of a wedding that my father photographed at the Plaza Hotel. And you'll see at the very bottom is a strip that you can barely make out, which says, do not contact. And what you're seeing there is Billie Holiday at the bar at Sugar Hill and then walking off into the night. It was something that he had never remembered that he photographed, but it reveals our back cover. And it says, ladies, and it's Billie walking off into the night. So the most amazing discovery, as you can imagine, a little sliver like that is just the kind of thing that makes a project go from an, a great project to an extraordinary project because it gives you something even more than you could have imagined and that was not originally part of the body of work that was taken. It was something that my father had forgotten about and was ever discovered. So that was a major find for me. So the next thing we'll talk about is making the case once you find the initial discovery, you get excited about it, and you go. And the luck was that in 2007, this is Guy Sperling and Chris Collins from the, New, uh, the Newark Star-Ledger. Newark was the city that Billy was performing in in April. And they decided that for the 50th anniversary of Billy being in Newark, they would do a story. It was a front page story, unseen Billy Holiday photographs. First time this has happened since the 50s. Unbelievable. My father was uh, unfortunately a year gone having passed in 2006. But the work is larger than life. Billy is always gonna be larger than life for us. And being able to share these kind of moments and celebrate these moments, gather the evidence, where was it, when it was. It's Pepe, her, 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 uh, her chihuahua there. Uh, and that's the great Sugar Hill, which no longer is in existence. I drove by, I got a personal tour from, uh, from Guy Sterling. And on Broad Street, it's, uh, it's an empty lot. But back in the 50s, there was a lot of money that was spent with regard to publicity since Billy was performing a special one a week, Easter week in 57, uh, because she could not perform in uh, New York City because of her drug conviction. And uh, it was a magical thing. This is one of the handbills that somebody had emailed me that ultimately made its way into our ephemera collage. And on the back is an autograph. I didn't know that, I had forgotten that we had the autograph. I might have included that in the, in the book had I remembered. Uh, but with gathering the evidence, I was figuring when would be the first time that Billy would have been introduced to my father. And Billy had recently been married to Louis McKay. And this is the contact sheet in which at the Douglas Hotel I believe my father was sussed out by Louis McKay and entered into this amazing world of Billie Holiday and was given the trust that he was given. I recently found the business card of Louis McKay a month or so before we went to final press on the book. And uh, it's just a magical, another facet of the story, which is that how did this card exist and where did it come from? But it, it was in my parents' house and I found it and it's an amazing asset to the book. This is the Douglas Hotel in the period of 1950s. I had to get this from, uh, from eBay, but it's a, it's a great resource when you find the pieces of the puzzle and you start to put them together. And here's Billie Holiday alone at the desk in her hotel, getting a first real stare down with my father. Can she trust him? And so this is the first night at Sugar Hill in which you're sitting at the table with Billie Holiday. You're that close. You're, you're gaining the trust of this amazing subject. Um, I went down to Delaware. This is uh, the nephew of Bob Parent. This is, this is Dale Parent. And he was looking through the files as I was looking for photographs of my father because the one thing that I did not have was a photograph of my father with Billie properly in the beginning. So after a full day of looking, 
We came across in the lower right corner, you'll see very shady, but you can see my father's hand on his glasses, shooting his Leica at Billy. And this is in the pink lacy dress again of April 18th, 1957. Another uh, photograph that we found from Bob Parent that was close to my father is there from Randall's Island, but again, a little blurry, not so perfect. It took my visiting my dear friend, the late Chuck Stewart. This is a photograph of my father photographing Billy in August 1957. And it was a tremendous find, linking up photographer and subject. Father shot that day with wide angle as well as the tight close-ups. And this being the Randall's Island New York Jazz Festival, there's the program, and on the left there is a strip of negative of Sarah Vaughan that my father did. He was actually included in the program before he went and photographed Billy. So he was already part of the, the celebration there in a way. And that's August 24th, 1957. And look at that bill, all for a dollar, ladies and gentlemen. So the next level of uh, this journey is, is that it takes a team. And as I look out, I see many members of that team, as I mentioned in my thank you. But really and truly, the book would not have happened without Willie Chu. Willie is a master scanner, Photoshop, a photographer, dear friend, supportive editor, and did the, the, the hard work of every page and made this, this, this book what it was. Uh, Willie also art directed this incredible ephemera collage, which collected together everything that I gathered, my father's files, mother's uh, ledger, the, the album, the business cards, everything, and really made it the beautiful piece that it is. We included that in the uh, National Arts Club show that happened this early this year. And of course, David Houston, thank you for being here, David. Um, you know, when you put together a book, what, what you, what I believed in the project so much that I made five by sevens of every image that my father did, which is almost 400 pictures. And so here was David editing with me as we went through the project. And uh, it's really important to have a team. And this is the introduction actually on, that's, that's mentioned uh, back in late 2000. I was visiting with Eric Rackless, who was at that time working at Archive Photo, and I had a meeting about Billie Holiday, and it says that uh, he's been showing the Billie Holiday book around, and one of those people was Christopher Sweet. And Christopher is my partner in crime. This book, again, doesn't happen without Christopher from the beginning. Christopher believed in the book, he wanted to champion the book, and it was always his book to champion with me. Here he is looking through the five by sevens as reference. There's our very first meeting with photocopies of all the photos that we had originally selected. We were eyeball to eyeball, figuring this out, and it was our book to share with the world. Figuring out the chronology was an amazing moment. Um, I had my father's original contact sheets and then the uh, rearranged contact sheets because what he ended up doing was changing film in the middle, having multiple cameras, and uh, it was a, a little bit of back and forth thing to get the actual chronology that I ended up writing in my essay. Um, but uh, it's the kind of stuff that archivists love to do. You, you, the history detective in all of our, our hearts really is, the, this is the calling. When, when you believe in a project, uh, there, there's a responsibility to, to really get the facts as right as you can get them. And uh, it's also in the terms of making the book, we wanted to really provide big, glorious, full bleed, double truck, gorgeous 180 gram paper, Christopher and I are proofing, going through, making sure this book was as magical as it is today. And I just found out that this picture on the left is going to be included in Feel Free, which is the upcoming Zadie Smith uh, collection of essays. So I'm very proud that she'll be including the introduction to the Billie Holiday book that she wrote, which is magical. Uh, and it was really the, the, the top uh, moment for, for us and made the pictures full context as it channeled her voice. The color pictures had never been printed before. We scanned this or some from two and a quarter slides and uh, made the magic happen. 
Returning to the earlier picture that I had shown you of her walking in the street, as my father was shooting with available light, you know, we had to figure it out to make it uh, as good as it could be. And we really took the time and effort to go over each picture and meticulously make them their best. And as I said, ultimately, that picture will forever be the back cover of our great book. And what you may not know is that this book was art designed with a wink and a nod to Billy's autobiography, which, as I said, was co-written by William Dufty. You'll see the <coughs> collection. What we did in the book also is we had to crop. And in making the book, to give you a full page like this, we had to crop from her there. And there she is backstage with the compact that she received as a possible birthday gift. Now, one of the people that couldn't be there at the end of the, the journey was Ben Lifson, who had written the introduction to my father's New York in the 50s book. But Ben ultimately does have the final say in the book at the end of the acknowledgments, and I'll quote from Ben here. Ben said, remember, this is Billie Holiday. If she'd been a man and played basketball, nobody would be paying attention to Michael Jordan. She's to jazz what Bobby Fischer is to chess, the miracle that everyone's hoping will happen again. And thank you, Ben. So as much as that was a tribute to Ben, ultimately, this book is a tribute to my father and Billie Holiday from both sides of the stage doing what they did. I went in search of my father, but I found Billie. My father in the 50s, this was taken by my maternal grandfather, <laughs> had his Leica M3s, and was a man I never got to know until after the fact. My parents, having met in the 50s, this was taken by Maynard Frank Wolf at my father's photo studio. They were quite a team in the 50s. And they'll always be a team in my heart, and always connected. <sighs> And that connection is about what these photographs really are. Because Billy and my, my father became friends during that week. Here they are talking at the bar. And when he starts out photographing her, he's far away. And he's respectfully trying to get her in the scene and gain her trust. And he gets a lot closer. And really, these pictures would not have happened without her granting him the access and the trust that, he, that she gave him. And a tribute to a great lady. Now, here she is <coughs> with her godchild, Bevan Dufty, and his mother, Maylie Dufty, in the Dufty apartment, as I mentioned, which is 43 West 93rd. Apartment 17, I just found out. It's the kind of moment that my father would capture with tenderness and reflect and pay tribute to this great lady in a way that not seen before. So here's Billy on the street. And the woman in awe of Billy Holiday as Billy checks out her, her marquee. It's my father capturing uh, the way that she's observed, and is itself a tribute, and Billy then paying tribute to herself. So after the gig, one night, Billy spills a drink, cashier's looking at her, records are on the wall, it's a mini movie. But what we see in the pictures that we've never seen before is a tenderness and a maternal quality and a loving gracefulness that is an aspect of this amazing woman which needs to be shared with the world and remembered and paid tribute to. This is in the Dufty apartment with her godchild. And that tenderness extended to the woman that gave her the gift on the street it says darling on the, the digital, uh, the, digital the, 
the neon sign there. That's Carl Drinkard, our piano player. And Billy always wanted a child, but she never had a child. But what I observed in the photographs was a tenderness with her godchild that I'd never seen. And I love the way that Bevan is gripping her sweater here and the way that Billy is gripping her fan here. So powerful, so evocative. And father and son, a tribute to, to Bill in a way. My father recognizing these tender moments. My parents, this is my father and me back in the 70s. As I said, the book really started out as a tribute to my father, but ultimately ends up being as a dual tribute to my father and Billy. This is an ASMP magazine. This was uh, written by Jill Waterman, who did the wonderful blog uh, article for B&H. And Jill has always been so great to my cause as an archivist. Unseen Billy Holiday. And uh, with regard to a tribute, the first time that this picture and any picture of my father's had been in The New Yorker, accompanying the great Zadie Smith essay, which as I said, will be in her book upcoming. Um, it was more than I ever would have dreamed. It, it is uh, the masterstroke on top of which these photographs will always be will, uh, in my heart. And uh, it's a tremendous, uh, dual tribute here. The New York Times did a story and a slideshow as well, and uh, the first time that all those pictures had been included. My father had worked as a freelance photographer for the New York Times since uh, early 50s, so it was great to bring him back home. And uh, James Estrin had been talking to me for years saying, when the book comes out, please let us be the first. And of course, the New York Times was the first to do the uh, the story. So part of the tribute was to do a, a show and Robert Yanner from the National Arts Club helped me put together this beautiful show which again we, we did at the National Arts Club at Gramercy Park and the photography committee was uh, always waiting to do this show, Katherine Johnson. Thank you. I blew up the pictures 40 by 60 and showed them in a way that they'd never been seen before because many of these pictures had never been printed before. And there's a family portrait at the end of the show, bittersweet, but ultimately a triumph and something that I can share with the world and will always be there. Remembering my father in the 50s with his Leica cameras and his meticulous attention to detail, the photographs he shot with available light, pushing the film, doing things that at that time were the cutting edge of the photography. Again, this photograph was taken by my maternal grandfather. And um, ultimately the book will stand the test of time. It is my love letter to, to Billy, as I said, tipping the cap in great respect and believing in the work from the very initial discovery aspect through the uh, gathering of the evidence and making the book and uh, it's available today. Um, I can't believe it took 17 years to do this, but it's the kind of project that if you find yourself discovering material and you believe in that material, you follow it to the end and you make it as good as it can be and then uh, you, you share it with the world, and it becomes part of the, the collective uh, record. And what we've done for Billie Holiday is just beginning. The book just came out in May, and uh, the response so far with regard to uh, the press uh, has been tremendous. New York Times, uh, New Yorker, New York Magazine, Loire Photography, you name it. Um, and uh, there'll be a show in, uh, in a couple of years starting with, uh, I'm working with sites, and we'll be doing that around the world with this wonderful material. Um, so that's pretty much my talk today. 
uh, I'm really happy you could come here today, and uh, I'll be happy to sign books for anybody who'd like to buy. Um, if you're present in the audience, there's a special price, so I could run down here and buy a book before we depart today. Um, but it's, a, it's an honor to, to present this project, which uh, I believed in from the beginning, and as I said, was an example of something that if you, you discover a body of work that you really believe in, and you, you put in the diligent work, uh, you can come across with uh, this amazing book and, and really add a page to history. So thank you so much for being here.